Oh, hello everybody. My name is Laurie Ann Smith and welcome to my channel. Um, April is Child Abuse Awareness Month in the United States and uh, sort of around the world it's known um, as, as the Child Abuse Awareness Month. I think all year round should be Child Abuse Awareness Month. <laughs> um, not just April, you know, um, but that's the national the month that they chose to do this. And so I usually almost every year try to do something. Um, you know, speak out and speak wherever I can about child abuse prevention. And just to be one more voice, really, just to keep this from getting shoved back under the carpet, right? So um, I almost always do something in April, and I'll be doing several things this time, um, this year. I've been really just, I don't know, just, it's just been amazing the amount of people that have contacted me to see if I wanted to speak um, at their venues this year. And, um, that's awesome because it, it's going to take all of our voices. It really is. Um, you know, I'm a survivor of child abuse. So for me, it's, it's natural for me to want to speak out against this, um, you know, but, but there are many other people who were not abused as children who care about children and want to make a difference in this mess. And so, um, you know, that's wonderful, right? We need everybody's voice in on this. Child rights, I mean, children have rights. They have the right to life. They have a right to an abuse-free life. And they have a right to get their needs met. They have a right to, you know, grow up in a loving, caring environment. Um, you know, children are dying needlessly. And I just happen to survive. <laughs> so that's why I speak out. Because I'm like, you know, I could have stayed silent and just done my thing and but I thought you know why am I not speaking out about this I know I know all about this so why am I not making, using my voice and so right around 2007 is when I started to realize I needed to get involved and I needed to start speaking out against what I knew was incredibly wrong and obviously child abuse is wrong <laughs> it's still happening out there and it always will because unfortunately people will not make the right decisions on behalf of children and or won't get you know won't get help for their issues and abuse children. Um, the children are not put on this planet to abuse. Children not children are not born to be abused, and they're not. They shouldn't be treated as just a, an object or some sort of a commodity. And unless we all speak out against this, it's just going to keep happening. The reason why it's been allowed to go on and on and on for so long is because the world's turned a blind eye always. And it's because it's a very disturbing issue, child abuse. Uh, who wants to deal with it, right? People say, oh, well, it's not my problem. You know, those aren't my children, so why should I worry about it? And, um, you know, that's the attitude. That's why it's still happening. Um, because people in, in families will do that, turn blind eye. People will know that, that a child's being abused and they won't do the right thing. They won't make a phone call. They won't get something done about it. And they'll, they'll even have proof, but they still won't do anything about it. And then children, are, you know, sadly enough, this situation is ridiculous. Children are being removed from homes that they shouldn't be removed from. And then they're left in homes that they should be removed from. And really horrible decisions are being made on, on you know, behalf of, this, of, of these children out here. And they're ending up in body bags in the morgue, right? And this is sad. It's tragic and it's happening right now as I'm sitting here speaking. It's not funny. Uh, as a survivor of abuse, I can sit here and I can just honestly say this is ridiculous that people would do these things to a child and think that it's okay. And that the world uh, stage, just, you know, whoever these players are, people that set the the standard for the laws and the the the, 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 the the criminal justice system, the whole entire thing is really messed up. Because abusers are, you know, even if they are arrested and charges are laid, they're arrested, uh, they go to court, they're found guilty of child abuse, they rarely do very much time. They usually get off for some sort of good behavior thing or time served already waiting for the actual trial to happen. They Sometimes they'll do a few years. Um, they've taken a child's life murder. It's murder, folks. It's wrong, and that's why I speak out against it. Um, 
you know, because I survived, right? So this is the issue. And I mean, every day I wake up with the knowledge of what it is to be abused. I can't, I, I just, I'm just not able to uh, not remember because that was my life growing up. So I think about these little children out here around the world, not just in North America, but really all the way around the world who are suffering, you know, needlessly at the hands of, of somebody who's abusing them in whatever way. And that, that, that includes any type of abuse, you know. Um, this is incredibly wrong. That's why I speak out against this. So April being the, the National Awareness Month, I'm glad to be able to use my voice, um, you know, to do what I can. I, in our own capacity, that's really all we can do, right? If you have children, you know, you can make sure your children are not being abused by anybody. <laughs> that's really important because one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, adult child interaction you know if you don't know who your children are around all day you better be making sure that you do and you know that's where the abuse happens wherever the children are right so as a parent you know you can you can help you can help protect your children and you should right um it's not always a parent abusing a child right? and so you know it's, it's quite it can be stranger danger too there is that right but um, it, it's 95% always somebody who knows the child, someone who has access to the child or the children, and someone who um, the family or the family unit, whoever these people are, trusts with that child, right? So you need to, you can protect your children you know, if you have children. And, you know, I don't have children. I was made barren by CSA child sexual abuse, so I couldn't have children. Um, but if I had children, I'd be protecting them. You bet. And so what I do is, you know, what we can all do really is, is whatever we can do in our own capacity, like I said, is just get involved. Make sure the children around you are not being abused and keep an eye, you know, open. Keep, keep a watch over children around you in your area and make a phone call. You suspect abuse, make a phone call. A phone call made in good faith is not going to cause any problems. And so, you know, if, if you're right, you could save that child's life. That's the issue. So maybe the only person that would make that phone call, somebody says, you know, oh, it's not my place. It's not my problem. You know, if you, you, you may be the only one who would make that phone call to save that child's life. So it's very important. Um, and, you know, just get involved where you can. I'm not ashamed to speak out against child abuse because that's the issue. I know when I first started speaking out, I, I'm, you know, you can see all my videos on my playlists and stuff. Way back in 2009, I started speaking out against child abuse and standing up for child rights. And I was a bit nervous at first because I, was, I, because I wasn't sure how much of my own story I wanted to disclose at that time on air <laughs> with people, you know. And I was like, you know, it was a little bit nerve wracking. And, um, but now I'm like, you know what, what do I have to lose by speaking out against child abuse? Nothing. And personally, I don't care who likes me and who doesn't because I speak out against child abuse. It really doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. I don't care, you know? Um, it's, it's not embarrassing to me. What's embarrassing to me is that people don't care about child abuse. That's, that's, that's terrible. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even have children and I care because I was abused as a child. I know how hard it is for these kids out here. The ones who are dead, they're dead. The ones who are going to die tonight, there's nothing we can do to save them. Somebody's not going to make a phone call. Nobody's going to get that child some help or those children, and they're going to die. Right? But I survived, and I'm along with many millions of survivors, and thank God. Um, I didn't used to think so. I used to be very unhappy that I survived, and I wanted to be dead and from the age of 10, really. Um, I realized I was dead. And that I should have been dead. And I spent a life trying to die uh, until the age of 42. So, hi, Melissa. How are you? I hope you're okay. I, I, I've been, been keeping you in my prayers. <laughs> I hope you're all right. And, um, yeah, no, I just decided to come on for April, April Child Abuse Awareness Month. Um, because this is so important to me. Um, because, you know, 
people know quite often that a child's being abused. They might suspect something. They see stuff going on. They may even know that a child's being abused, and they don't say anything. They don't do anything. Sometimes it's out of fear of the abuser, whoever it is, maybe, you know, threatening their life, you know, threatening to do something to them if they do tell. Uh, quite often, that's why children don't tell that they're being abused. I know my life was threatened. Um, I was told by my, I was actually, uh, my mother was my main abuser and she is threatened that she would kill me if I ever told anybody what's going on outside, out, what was going on in our home. So, <clears throat> which I did tell a few people, but <laughs> she did threaten my life, she, you know, and this is the issue. Um, children's lives are being threatened by these abusers, right? So they quite often aren't going to say anything. And Many of these children who are being abused, you know, who's abusing them? If it's in, if it's a familial situation, like in the family, if it's a, you know, a parent or a, a you know a grandparent or some sort of a relative, they, they quite often don't want to make waves in the family, and they also may not want to be removed from their family, so they don't say anything, you know, to teachers or to anybody who could get them some help, right? For me, my, my parents were brought up uh, on child abuse charges. So it's not like the system didn't know that my parents weren't abusing us. They didn't consider the abuse to be life-threatening, so they left us in the home. And so, uh, unfortunately, we should have been removed. Nowadays, we would have all been removed, definitely. They would have been like, these parents can't cope. They're abusing their children. They've got to go. Would we have had a better life in foster care? I don't know, because foster care parents abuse children, too. Children are abused through the foster care system. And, um, you know, I knew children who were in foster care who were abused. And I was just like, you know, what's your choices, you know, or hit the street. More abuse out there, right? And it's like, what are your choices if you actually survive the abuse? This is not okay. This tells you how very sick our society is. And not just ours in North America, I'm talking worldwide that people would choose and make really wrong choices um, on how they're going to treat vulnerable people. And children are vulnerable. They really are. They are society's, part of society's vulnerable group. They need protection. They need help. They, they really they can't protect themselves. So they need somebody to protect them. And if the parents and the caregivers and the people in that child's life are not going to protect them, but are going to abuse them, then they need somebody else that's going to protect them, right? But quite often they get removed from the home, put into foster care situation or adopted into some other family, and then the abuse continues on because those people are making wrong choices. And why does society think this is okay? There's... Think about all the children being abused. For every child that's being abused, there's an abuser out there. Someone is, someone is responsible for this abuse. Who are these people? These are people? These are people living on your street, living down the road from you, living in your apartment building, living in your city, living in your town. And these are people that would show up at work and you would never know that they're abusing their children. Right? You work right next to them. And it's like, why they think this is okay to do to children? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't understand it. Like, I don't get it. I was abused as a child. I, I, I know why, what my parents would did to me and what, what, what was going on. The issue is, is I don't understand how you could do that to a child. I really don't. And think that that's okay. I don't care what kind of abuse it is, you know, child physical abuse, verbal, emotional, psychological abuse, child sexual abuse, neglect, child spiritual abuse. It's all wrong. And these are these people sitting next to us. And we wouldn't even know that they're abusing their children, right? But this is incredibly wrong. And it's just got to stop. You know what I'm saying? So I don't mind using my voice out here. I don't mind. What do I have to lose? Absolutely nothing. We all need to get involved, right? In some way, shape, or form. Young people especially. You know, a lot of us advocates are getting old, right? I didn't start this stuff till after the age of 42. You know, I'm in my mid-50s. How long I'm gonna be here, I don't know. And that's why I do this stuff on video and audio. 
and I write, I've written books and I've, I've tried to do, I'll actually probably do some more writing. But the thing is, is I only have so much time left, right? And there's a bunch of awesome people out there doing amazing work who are getting involved with their, you know, the different uh, family services and stuff like that. And really, it's going to take the next generation to change this. It really is. But it won't change if people don't care. It won't change if people just don't care about children and they just don't think that children are worthy uh, worthy uh, uh, beings, right? That's the issue. That's what child, child abuse, children who are abused the abusers are, are basically are, are, are taking their rights away as if they're not worthy of those rights. Children have more rights than adults do, actually, because they have the right to not be abused as children. So, I mean, children's rights, if we don't stand up for them, they're just going to disappear. Right? So, yeah, it's frustrating. It's very, very frustrating. And every year that rolls around, I'm like, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still talking. And I don't care who doesn't like it. It doesn't matter to me. You know, who doesn't like the fact that I speak out against child abuse? Some people don't. And I'm like, I don't care. Too bad. I'm going to keep talking. And I'm just going to keep making waves and pushing and pushing until to wake people up to the reality that children are dying. Just check out the headlines. Nobody wants to see those headlines. Those headlines are horrible. You know, but I never pass them by. Never. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to look at those child, horrible child abuse headlines of children being killed and tortured and murdered. Sometimes I'm sitting there having a good day and I'm thinking, God, you know, another one, or another two, or another three. You know, so it's going to put me in a bad mood. And it's like, yeah, well, okay, but then I remember, you know, I don't have to go that far back into my memory banks to remember laying in my own pool of blood as a child. It doesn't take much to put me there. You know what I mean? To to set to send me back to 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 knowing that my parents really didn't want me and really didn't want any of their children and abused us all. So this is the thing. You know, I what else would I do? But speak out against this stuff. To me, it just made total sense. You know, it's like this is incredibly wrong. And, uh, you know, young people, really, it is going to be up to you to change this for the next generations. Like I said, I'm glad you're doing good, Melissa. And I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm thankful because I was worried about you. <laughs> so I, and, I, and I had a few weeks ago, I had stopped doing the daily broadcast and I did think about you. And I hope you're okay. And I hope you, you know, you're getting some help and things are getting better. I really do. And um, so, yeah, this is the thing. It's it's a it's a harsh situation. I'm going to be speaking out at the end of the month. Uh, I've got I've got it in the community section. I actually put the little link there with the poster. It's a uh, Hope Collaborative with the Riverside Family Services. They've asked me and and uh, my co-advocate sisters, Donna Shear and Lee Roberts, to speak at a webinar workshop, which is really cool because I'm going to be telling, um, they want me to tell my story. And so the issue is, is I'm going to be telling my story, but I'm going to be telling our story for all of you survivors out here who follow my work. And, you know, and for those that don't, <laughs> I'm telling our story because so many people cannot speak out. So many people for, for whatever reason cannot tell people what happened to them or they just, they just won't. And they just suffer in silence. And no one knows what they went through. And people like me sitting here who can speak out against this and do understand how hard it is. And I have nothing to lose by speaking out against this stuff. It's like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sharing our story. This is not just my story. So the issue is, is like, it's a real privilege and a real honor, um, you know, to be able to do this. And, I'm thankful that Stephanie reached out to me from Riverside Family Services to ask if I would, if I would do this um, at the end of the month. So it's going to be on the 27th, I believe. It's a Tuesday in the afternoon. It's a little bit of a strange time, but um, you can check out the poster. It's in the community section if you wanted to check that out. And hi, Jody. I hope you're well. Thank you.
Thank you for your kind comments. And yeah, this is the thing. I mean, so many people do, um, you know, have that sort of breakthrough in their 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, it just it happens when it happens. For me, it was the age of 41, 42, 41 and a half, actually. <laughs> I would say 41, 42. Um, I'm glad. I'm thankful um, because it saved my life. You know, I, if I, I was going to continue, you know, I was going to continue in this spiral uh, into um, just not being able to cope and uh, commit suicide. So I knew that's where I was headed and I knew I needed help. So this is what child abuse does to children. If they do survive, not everybody's suicidal that's been abused as a child. But, our, you know, our lives were were damaged, you know, and, and sometimes it takes years before we actually see that damage. And all of a sudden, 40, 50, 60 years old, is sitting back going, what is, what happened? What is this? You know what I mean? Like, what happened to me, right? Why am, Why have I done what I've done in my life? What caused this? You know, it's it's a horrific situation. I know so many survivors of abuse because of what I've been doing. And so, um, you know, I just like to be a voice for all those people who cannot speak out and a voice for all of those children whose voices were silenced. That's important to me. That's why I just wanted to have my, like my voice with everybody else's voice, because there's a lot of people speaking out against this stuff. There's a lot of people standing up, you know, for child rights and to stop and prevent child abuse. But there's also a lot of people speaking up for survivors and the issue is, is I just wanted to be one more voice because I thought, you know, I survived. I made it. And for all those children that didn't make it, I'm glad to add my voice in there. You bet. Because they suffered and they died needlessly. There's no reason or excuse for child abuse. right? There's none. I don't care what the issue is. People say, oh, well, you know, that person was just sick or mentally ill or, you know, whatever. There's no excuse for child abuse. And that's regard, that's whether, that, that doesn't just mean family type abuse. That's institutional abuse of children. That's, you know, religious abuse of children. Um, you know, there's just no excuse for it. People will try to, all these abusers out here try to come up with these really good excuses of why they did what they did to these children. There is no excuse for child abuse. No one ever has to abuse a child. You know? It's like, you know, what all these people are going to sit back and say, well, you know, uh, that, that's all I could think of doing. Really? Are you serious? You know what I mean? Like there's there's not the, the penalties and the, the, the laws are not, they're not severe enough. People know that if they kill their child, they're going to get off in a couple of years. So they don't care. They just kill their children or kill somebody else's child, get off in a few years, pop out another one and kill that one too. If you check the headlines out, that's what they do, right? And it's wrong. And society says, oh, well, they have rights too. Is that, that's such bogus BS that the, that the perpetrators of these crimes end up with more rights than the victims. And that makes me angry. That's why I keep speaking out. I'm like, you know, this is not okay. These children that were that are that are dead because of child abuse. I mean, this has been going long, thousands and thousands of years. People have been killing children and thinking that it's fine. You know what I mean? So we're not just talking recent days. We're talking since time began. And you know, they think, well, no big deal, right? And society says, yeah, no big deal. Well, I say, no. That's wrong. And I'm just one of these people out here willing to say it. And I don't care if it goes. You know why people don't want to hear about child abuse? Because, because they, they don't care if it's going on. You know, so they don't, they don't want to hear people like me talking about this, this stuff. Because, you know, it's like, well, gee, you're ruining my day. And it's like, well, you know what? I don't care. Children are dying. And it's like, so this is the issue. I, I can't really put it behind me. You know what I'm saying? Because I suffer, um, I've suffered my whole life because of I was abused as a child um, in, in every way, 
physically, emotionally, psychologically. And, uh, you know, this is the issue. It's, it's something I can't, I can't just forget. Right. Um, and the issue, would I forget? Would I want to? I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? Cause it was wrong. Never should have happened. And I'm just willing, like I said, to speak out against it. Right. Oh, I'm, yeah, you know, well, I'm glad that you survived, Jody. And I'm, <laughs> you know, this is the issue. It's, uh, these things are so hard. They really are. Um, my mom passed away when I was 30 and um, in, in April this month. And um, when she died, I mean, I, I thought, you know, I was sitting on the on the at the hospital I, you know, when she we went to say or goodbye. She had passed away, and um, I was sitting on the concrete out in the front, like on the sidewalk. And I thought, you know, she can never hurt me again. She's gone, and this, this relief came over me. I was like, thirty years old. I'm like, she can never ever hurt me again. She wasn't my only abuser. She was just my main abuser, <laughs> and um, I just thought, you know, I I I. I I was relieved in a way, but I had no idea that from 30 to 42, that she was going to be hurting me again. All of that abuse was, was still there. You know what I mean? So it's just a perpetual thing until I dealt with it. Um, just horrific what people go through. And, you know, I'm glad that you survived and I hope that you're doing all right. And, you know, so, so hard and for so many people, right? Yeah, I hear you, Melissa. I mean, these things are, you know, abuse is horrific, right? And that's why I speak out because I'm, you know, I'm not afraid to speak out against abuse. It's, not, it's because I'm not afraid to admit how completely horrible and wrong it is. And that these things should have never happened to us, never. And, you know, if you're a survivor, uh, you know, you didn't deserve that. People in my family actually told me that I deserved the treatment that I got. And I actually should have, should have been treated worse. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It's like, well, the abuse that my mom inflicted on me could have killed me, especially my mom. Um, you know, because she was horrific. It's like, there's no other word for it. It's just like, you know, it's not okay to like bust your child's head open, you know, and then spit in their face and throw them out. You know what I mean? It's just not okay to do stuff like that. It's just not, you know? And so, you know, these things, there's, it's just so, so difficult for people. And that's why I'm willing to speak out against it. I just open up my mouth and start speaking. And that's what I did. And like I said, at first I was a bit nervous because, you know, I had never publicly broadcasted anything about child abuse. And I was just like, wow. But it didn't take me very long. And I was like, okay, no, I'm just going to say it. It needs to be said. You know, um, there's this stuff is not okay. Um, even my sister knew what I was doing. And, you know, she didn't say why are you doing this? I mean, she knew we grew up in the same house, you know. Um, would she ever be able to speak publicly about it? Probably not. She would never tell anybody about anything, you know what I mean? Um, I'm just willing to stand up and say, you know what, I don't care, it's wrong. But I was also willing to stand up to my abuser parents and tell them what they were doing was wrong too. And, you know, it got me beatings, but I was like, I don't care, <laughs> this is not okay. It's like some, someone's got to stand up. Someone's got to stand up for these children today and, you know, say, this is not okay. And I'm willing to do it. And I hope that you'll join me, right? We need everybody's voice in on this. This is not okay. People raping children, people beating children, burning children, torturing children. This is not okay. We're talking even verbal torture. We're talking even, even emotional torture, right? We're talking, this is, this is not all right. So if you want to check my stuff out and go back and listen to my stuff, because I talk about it all. And I'm telling you, and I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to be doing lots of stuff here for April, uh, Child Abuse Awareness Month. And 
I'm just hoping that, um, you know, we can make a difference in this. All of our voices together. That's why I say, I'm just adding my voice to everybody else's, right? Who am I? I'm not somebody special. I'm just this average person doing my thing, trying to stay alive, trying to stay afloat. And trying to get a job so I can keep going. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, the old, that's all I want to do. I just, just keep an internet connection. You know what I'm saying? So as long as I have the internet and a computer or a phone or some way to do this, uh, I will always be speaking out against this till my dying breath. And that's my, that's my victory over my abusers is like, yeah, you couldn't shut me up. <laughs> you tried. And they couldn't kill me. They tried. And they couldn't make me kill myself. I win. I win this fight. And in, not just for me, but for all of these children out here who are being killed and murdered right now. I'm a voice in the conscience of society that says it's wrong. It needs to stop. People need to stop ch killing children. And people need to start caring about children. When are we going to care about children? Right? When is the world going to care about children? That's my big question. Right? Why is it so hard? for people to care about children and stop hurting them and start taking care of them and start loving them and treating them with dignity and respect. And, you know, it's just so important. So get involved, do what you can. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate you all being here. And who else do we have here? I know we had a few people dropping in, um, but I really appreciate you spending this time with me. And Melissa, I hope you take care of yourself and everything's going okay. Uh, I'm going to broadcast again. Obviously, I'll be back around for the month of April. And uh, I, I had taken a couple weeks off there, but I needed to take a little break. And so um, I'm going to be doing some more work. I'm not sure if it's going to be daily. I might. I might. because, But it's going to be kind of child abuse prevention focused because it's for the month of, of April, Child Abuse Awareness Month, right? But in the meantime, I'll be telling my story too because um, it's important for people to understand. You know, I know I, I know what these children are going through. It's like, you know, I needed hospitalization. I didn't get it. You know I'm saying children are, are lying, you know, in their beds or their rooms or their, you know, wherever they're at. They're not going to get any help and they're going to die. I just have to make it. This is the issue. So I'm going to keep using my voice. I hope you will too. Take care, everybody, till the next time. And I wish you a wonderful day. I, I know not all of us are going to have a good day, but I really wish you one anyway. And um, like I said, if you can't speak out, you know, for whatever reason, don't feel bad about it. But um, if you can speak out and do something about this stuff, get involved. <laughs> Join somebody's voice and get involved because your voice does count. It does matter. And you count. You matter. You know, I have many survivors listening to my stuff. And, you know, I tell you, you do count. You do matter. Yeah, you matter to me. You need to matter to yourself. And who cares what the world thinks? You know what I'm saying? Like you do matter and your voice does count. And you never should have had to go through that. Right? So for all my survivor friends out there hanging there, do not give up. Every day that I wake up, it's a slap in my abuser's faces every single time. <laughs> they couldn't kill me. They couldn't take me out. And they couldn't get me to kill myself. I'm still here. It's like, hello. And every day I wake up, I'm like, yeah, I win. <laughs> My victory. That's right. And I want that for you, too. You stick it out, everybody. And we'll talk to you later.